Number eight from the 2006 High Maths paper two, exact values of sines in a given right angle triangle. Eight marks altogether, which will be quite easy to get as long as you don't make certain daft mistakes. Now there are lots of little steps for those eight marks and sometimes you have to do a little bit before you just get one of them. Well the first thing is, before I can find the sine, which is the opposite of the hypotenuse, you'll need to work out the hypotenuse. Now don't just look at that, that's the first daft mistake and think, oh, 1, 2, root 3, so that's root 3. Well it can't be, because root 3 is smaller than 2. So that's not a 1, 2, root 3 triangle, you have to work out it properly. You need to use Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse, which would be 2 squared plus 1 squared, and then take the square root. So that's 4 and 1 is 5, so that means it's root 5. The hypotenuse is root 5. But that's not the first mark yet. Though, if you put root 3 there, you will definitely have lost the mark. You don't get the first mark until you say, ah, what's the sign of A? Of course, there's another little nuisance. It's all in degrees here. So, strictly speaking, I should keep putting the wee degree signs in. The sign of A is the opposite of the hypotenuse, is 1 over root 5. That's the first mark. Another thing, it is paper 2. You do have a calculator there. Don't use it if it says exact values. Don't, for instance, work out the size of the angle A from the tangent, for instance. The tangent is a half, and then do inverse tan, you get an angle, and then just do sine and cosine or whatever you want. No, you'd get nothing if you did that. Now, sine 2a then. Don't just think, oh, I'll double sine a, because you'll get nothing, obviously. Sine 2a, you'll have to look up, remember or look up. What's the formula for the sine of the double angle? That's 2 sine the single angle cos the single angle. Now, that gets you a mark, but it was at the front. What you had to do was look it up. Now, I know the two, I know sine A is at 1 over root 5. What's the cos of A? So I have to go back to here. What is the cos of A? The cos of A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's 2 over the root 5. So if I put that in, 2 times 1 over root 5 times 2 over root 5 then I'm heading towards the final mark for part eight, I forgot to mention. That's the third mark for getting the cosine. Get the answer to this, multiply the numerators. Two times one times two is four. Root five times root five reconstitutes the five again, so you get four fifths. The sine of two a is four fifths. There's a painless four marks. Now for the next four marks it says, essentially find the value of sine 3a, and then not trusting that you'll successfully realise you'll have to split it up to do that, because you're certainly not just going to say it'll be three times that answer, it even tells you. What could you do with 3a? Split it up into a 2a plus an a. But don't be daft and just add up that answer onto that answer and try and do four fifths plus 1 over root 5. No, just use an appropriate formula. It's not the double angle formula this time. This is the sum formula, the sine of the sum of two angles. So you just look up the front, and that'll be sine 2a cos a, and then swap partners, cos 2a sine single a. And for successfully being able to turn to the front and copy that down, you're given a mark. Now, to evaluate it, how many of these do I know? I know sine A, I know cos A, I know sine 2A, there it's there, but I need to figure out cos 2A. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You could either expand that using the double angle formula for cos 2A, which I'll put here briefly. Cos 2A, then you look up the front and you're overwhelmed with a choice. Maybe you'll go for 1 minus 2 sine squared a, because that was the one you found first of all, a bit of loyalty there, makes no difference. So it's 1 minus 2 times, now sine squared means whatever sine a is, I square it, so that's 1 over root 5. Squaring that, square the numerator 1, square the denominator 5, so it's 1 minus 2 fifths. 1 minus 2 fifths, and if you lose 2 of the fifths, it means you've got 3 fifths left. So cos 2a is 3 fifths. Now doing that gets a mark. 
substituting it in. So you just pick all the bits and pieces. Sine 2a was 4 fifths. Cos single a was 2 over root 5. Plus cos 2a was 3 fifths. Sine a was 1 over root 5. Doing that gets a mark. You haven't done anything. It just gets a mark. You put them in. And then getting the final answer. So there's two parts. Notice they've got the same denominator as 5 root 5. So the whole thing's out of 5 root 5, a common denominator. And the tops would be 8 plus 3. I'm not going to show it separately. 8 plus 3 is 11. There's the final mark in that part. Of course, if you've used your calculator to work this out, which I suppose you're perfectly entitled to do, you won't get it in that form because the calculator will give you it with a rationalised denominator. Multiply the top and the bottom by root 5. Multiply the top by root 5, multiply the bottom by root 5, turns it into 5, so it would give you this instead. Which, of course, is the immediate giveaway that you just press the buttons in the calculator instead of engaging a few neurons. Now, there is another way of working out this cos 2a without going through the formula. Since you know the value of sine 2a, you can construct the triangle which has got an angle of 2a in it, which of course isn't simply this triangle doubled up. No, I know the numbers for the 2a triangle. The sine is 4 over 5, which means using Pythagoras, the side has to be a 3, because here's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So straight away you can say, what's the cosine of this new 2a angle? It's opposite, it's adjacent over the hypotenuse. It's 3 fifths. It's a much neater way of working out the cosine of the angle once you know the sine of it. So there you are, that would be the 8 marks altogether.